Hey guys, Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here, and in this series, we're going to be starting off and talking about everything you would need to know in regards to interfaces. And this is going to cover both the Blueprint side and the C++ side. So to begin, here's how this little series is going to go. So the video one, this one, we're going to discuss why are they used, or what are they used for, why would we use them, and why not just use a base class or something like that instead. Then next video, we're going to actually start on the implementation. So we're going to start with everything, do it all in C++, then expose all that to Blueprint and even make it implementable inside of Blueprint. So that way you can implement the function from C++ or Blueprint, depending on what you need. Then the last video, we're just going to do the exact same thing as these above, but just in Blueprint. So that's going to be my first actual, I guess you could say, real Blueprint tutorial. Anyhow, what are they used for? So C++ by just default does not have the concept of interfaces. Unreal actually creates that for us. Now, the only thing an interface class is in C++ is literally a class with no real implementations in it. It's just a bunch of virtual functions that you can go through and inherit from and override in other classes. So what I mean by that is, let's say we look at our character. One problem with the reflection system is you can't inherit from more than one U class. So for example, this character here inherits from a character. I cannot make this inherit from another class that is a U class as well. So what ends up happening is your way around that is with interfaces. And that also brings up other uses. So if we look at a character, then go to a pawn. Here you can see a pawn inherits from this nav agent interface. Because it's meant to be, you know, able to be possessed, so pawns and characters can be possessed by AI and have navigation and all that kind of stuff. But you can see, this is kind of the general feel of things. So you create your class, like let's say we have a bunch of pickup items, like food, water, ammo. You would add a interact or a pickup interface to all those classes, and then have a simple function that might say, or that might be called pickup. And then inside that pickup function, you do all your logic, such as adding the item to your inventory, adding the item directly to your firearm, whatever. That's kind of the general way you go about using it. So why would we use them? And I guess we can tie these two together. So why would we use an interface as opposed to a base class? Well, you can go the base class route, but you have other problems as well. So for example, let's say we have a... Uh, what would this be called, like a hunger and thirst system. So for the food, we might have a base class for food. And we could have all the logic in there. And, you know, it, it, it makes, it changes the, uh, changes your hunger when you, you know, pick it up. It gives you hunger, or it takes away hunger so you're, no, you're more full. Then you have water. It does the exact same thing, but it removes your thirst so you're not as thirsty. Now, you could add both of that you can kind of combine these two classes together and have something like a single base class and then derived from those classes, you could have a food and a water and you simply override the use function inside of them. So that way when you, you know, you use the food, you get hunger or you take away hunger. When you use the water, you take away water. But what happens if you want to go and, you know, do something like ammo? Well, you got to pick up ammo, but you don't eat, you don't drink ammo. What do you do with it? Well, you could override that use function again and just completely have your own implementation altogether. But then you have other stuff that is related to food and water that you don't necessarily want or even really need at all in your ammo class. That's just kind of adding clutter and making things ugly. So that's where you would use an interface. So you could have your hunger or your food and your water and your ammo all be three separate classes. They don't inherit from the same class. They're not related to each other at all. But they can all take in the same interface and have the same function overridden for that interface. So that way, when you pick up food, you take away your hunger. When you pick up water, you take away your hunger. When you pick up ammo, you, I don't know, you add it to your inventory or you add it to your firearm. You do whatever you want with it. And this can keep going on and on and on. So that way you can have like a single interact, which is what we're going to do is make it func or an interface called interact. And then we're going to have a function called interact. And when we call that function, we could do whatever we want with it. We could pick up items. We could 
pull a switch, we could open a door, all from the same interface. And that prevents us from having to do a bunch of stuff like, like I do in my old videos with a lot of casting. So let's say you had, you know, the ammo, food, water, door. And you had the ammo, or sorry, you had the food and the water as children of each other. So, you know, we can call the same function. Well, if you interact with something, you hit an actor, you would have to cast it to the food and water base class. Okay, if that cast fails, then you would cast it to ammo. Okay, if that cast fails, you would cast it to a door. And let's say the door succeeds, then great, you call the function on the door. Well, you just wasted two casts on something that is completely unnecessary for something that really could just be done in a single one. And when your item list grows, so will the amount of casts that you do. So that's kind of the gist of the goal behind interfaces, I guess you could say. Uh, again, Java has the concept of interfaces, C++ does not. So if you come from that background, you'll, you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about here. But in this case, all it is is a bunch of uh, virtual functions contained in a single class, not a, not a U class, that you override. So you just, in, like, you can make your character inherit from it. And then you could just do virtual, like, let's say you had a function called use. You would just do virtual void use, and you would override it. And then when this use function gets called on your character, then you could have your own logic to do, you know, blah, 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 blah here. So that's the idea. Well, hopefully I covered that, uh, I guess, decently, but if not, well, I'm sure someone will say so. Anyways, uh, next video, we're going to start actually implementing this stuff. So we're going to create the interface, create a basic actor and give it that interface, and then we can make it do something. And then I'll show you how to add this to different actors when we get to, you know, video three, because we can just make blueprint actors, make those uh, blueprint actors inherit from the interface and then implement said functions directly inside of blueprint where you don't need to touch C++ at all after you've already created the function. But that's going to be uh, obviously separate videos. So that's going to wrap this one up. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series and a Quantum Quest uh, game mode tutorial available. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.